Hello my dear students. Welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's topic, we are going to continue with our alternating current chapter. In the previous classes, we learned about uh, AC circuit which including resistance, inductor and capacitor. These three separately we learned, right? That is, if we are using a voltage V equals Vm sin omega t. If this is the voltage for a resistive circuit, if resistor is included in the circuit, current will be equal to Im sin omega t. Right? If a inductor is using, if an inductor is using in the circuit, I is equal to Im sin omega omega t minus pi by 2 and if a resistor uh, sorry a capacitor is using in the circuit then i will be equal to i m sin omega t plus pi by 2 that means here in the case of a capacitor it is the current is leading the voltage by a factor pi by 2 Right? Because when we are considering the phasor diagram, you will be remembering, I guess, uh, current is leading. Current is leading, we are telling. Here, in this case, if I am telling in terms of voltage, so suppose current is I m sin omega t, then what will be voltage for a capacitor? For a, first, I am considering a capacitor. If the current I am representing it as I m sin omega t, what will be the voltage V m sin omega t minus pi by 2? And if I am representing the current as I m sin omega t, what will be the voltage if a capacitor is, if an inductor is conduct, uh, connected V m sin omega t plus pi by 2, it will become because voltage is in front, current is at back side right in the case of inductor so if current is representing as i m sin omega t voltage will be represented as v m sin omega t plus pi by 2 okay clear so now we are going this is separately we found out so in short we can say voltage and current will be in phase with each other for the resistive circuit and in the inductive circuit current is lagging behind the voltage by a factor of pi by 2 and if I am telling about the capacitor, capacitor will be if an AC circuit is including in the uh, capacitor is included in the AC circuit current is leading the voltage by a factor of pi by 2. Okay. Now, if these three, three resistor, capacitor, inductor, these three are in the same circuit, same AC circuit itself, then how this variation will be happening? So that and all we already uh, learned in the previous detailed explanation portion. We already learned if you have any doubt in this derivation and all, you can just go to the playlist class 12 in playlist alternating current that playlist is there you can go through that all the derivations i very clearly explained over there and i'll be giving the uh, in the description box in this video description box also the details will be given okay so if we are connecting all these uh, in the same circuit itself what will happen so there we will be getting an impedance impedance means total resistance including from capacitor resistor and inductor impedance will be equal to root of r square plus xl minus xc the whole square what is this xl xl will be equal to omega l and what is xc xc is equal to 1 by omega c this is an important thing here in impedance okay so here how we are finding out using phasor diagram also you can find out or using analytical solution method also any one method you can adopt and finding out the value of this um, what is that uh, impedance okay there we we will be considering the voltage okay here voltage v equals vm sin omega t over here then what will be the voltage due to inductor voltage due to inductor will be it is going ahead voltage current is constant i is equal to im sin omega t then voltage will be vm sin omega t plus pi by 2 and here capacitor will be behind that 
okay this is for so this is vl i can represent it as vl this is vr and this is uh, vc so using vector diagram vl minus vc we will consider taking the parallelogram law of vector addition we will be finding out the resultant vector so that detailed explanation is there you can go through that uh, playlist uh, this here z z we are impedance root of r square plus xl minus xc the whole square and these are the details okay clear children so if uh, suppose in the question uh, if it is an rl circuit or rc circuit or lc circuit so uh, according to that we can substitute the respective values and find out the total resistance or inductive reactance we can find out inductive reactance capacitive reactance everything we can find out from this method okay clear children so next we are moving to the lc oscillations so lc oscillation means only inductor and capacitor is present in that okay if inductor and capacitor is present in the circuit how uh, the circuit will be what will be the variation it is lc oscillations why we are calling it as oscillation that also we are going to see over here okay lc oscillations okay so in the circuit which and all are there inductor is there a capacitor is here okay so it's an inductor inductor means it's a coil now i am giving a key, uh, key over here this is the capacitor okay in this lc it's a charged capacitor if suppose charge is not there we can connect a cap uh, this um, a cell and a key over here and connect okay now this is a charge it, so we are charging the capacitor it's a charged capacitor positive charges here negative charges there what will happen you can tell along with me and you can check whether it is correct or not so capacitor is here positive charge and negative charges are there so from charging charged capacitor is this one so what will happen when we are connecting that to the circuit discharge will start to come right it will start to discharge so the current will be passing from the capacitor to the inductor when it is passing through the inductor what will happen current is slowly increasing so the current is increasing that will have that will give rise to a magnetic field around it so when the as the current increases magnetic field also will be increasing when the magnetic field increasing so magnetic flux linked with the circuit changing and emf is inducing right i'll tell you once more so when it is charged with a charged capacitor is connected to the inductor and the current will be passing from positive to negative charge so current is increasing when current is increasing in this way so what will happen magnetic field also increasing net magnetic flux linked with the circuit changing so what will happen an emf will be inducing in the circuit so induced emf now first what happened emf is inducing so if emf is inducing in that what will happen that emf induced emf will try to oppose the cause for it that means it will try to reduce the flow of current right in the capacitor so when the capacitor is completely charged or completely charged capacitor what will be the total energy due to that capacitor ue will be equal to half cv square okay so this is the half c or q square by 2c any one formula you can use or q square by 2c also you can uh, use because that is given in your textbook as per textbook it is q square by 2c so that is the total energy electrical energy so here it is converting to magnetic energy so what is the value of magnetic energy magnetic energy will be equal to half l i square because it is passing through the inductor right so the energy here it is initially first initially the first uh, at uh, first capacitor is fully charged and the magnetic energy was zero over there when it started discharging at that time magnetic field is slowly increasing energy due to that magnetic field is slowly increasing it is reaching to the maximum value at that time energy is equal to electrical energy of the capacitor is equal to zero that means here it is fully discharged okay now it starts to decrease okay magnetic field is reducing over there when the magnetic field is reducing what will happen that 
the again change in magnetic flux right and emf will be inducing emf will be inducing and that now the emf is producing due to the decrease of magnetic field because current is less so that will help to increase the current again it will be charging capacitor will be charging over there so maximum electric electrical energy will be reaching again q square by 2c at that time magnetic field become equal to zero now what will happen again discharge now it is fully charged capacitor is fully charged now discharging discharging means what will happen here current will be moving through it magnetic field is inducing in it magnetic uh, magnetic field is producing and that magnetic field will due to that match change in magnetic field emf is inducing it will try to oppose that oppose the flow of current okay so it will be collapsing and we will be getting again the maximum value for magnetic field right and energy will be equal to zero then next what will happen you tell along with me now the capacitor is fully discharged so magnetic field is reducing when magnetic field is reducing again uh, this emf is inducing when emf is inducing it will try to oppose right it will try to oppose the uh, reduction when it is trying to oppose the reduction what will happen capacitor will again charging okay charging and discharging of capacitor is continuous so initially first it is discharging first it is discharging that there is charged capacitor then here it is discharged then again charging discharging the process is continuing that means it's charging discharging charging discharging like that it will be happening so this is called a lc oscillation so lc circuit will be acting as a oscillator oscillator means periodically increasing decreasing periodically the uh, the process will be continuing clear children this is about the lc oscillation now how we can represent this so whether it is a, uh, a continuously oscillations is happening in practical purpose when we are considering whether this will be an oscillation without a damping oscillation undamped oscillation is it is it an undamped oscillation no practical cases heat energy losses will be there so because of many reason discharging will uh, this it will be a damping but theoretically when we are saying it will be an undamped oscillation but practically when we are considering considering it will be a damped oscillation like this okay so this is the practical way of representing the oscillations clear now we are going to find out what will be the frequency of this oscillation so in the circuit what and all are there the capacitor is there inductor is there in an inductor what is the q by c is the voltage due to capacitor and in the case of inductor minus l into di by dt that is equal to 0 but now we know i is equal to dq by dt therefore this equation we can write it as q by c minus l into d square q by dt square equal to 0 while rearranging q by lc minus d square q by dt square is equal to 0 or we can write it as d square q by dt square minus q by lc is equal to 0 this equation when we are analyzing d square q by dt square minus q by lc is equal to 0 this equation is analogous to the equation of d square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to 0 right so what is the omega value if we are uh, compa comparing these two equation omega equals 1 by root lc okay this is the uh, omega angular uh, velocity or angular frequency how we can find out the frequency omega equals 2 pi into nu equals 1 by root lc therefore nu equals 1 by 2 pi root lc okay clear children this is the frequency of oscillation okay lc is frequency of oscillation this is how we are finding out 
so i think this video is clear for you and in the next video in tomorrow's class we will be considering the what is that some numericals related to this lcr circuit lcr circuit i just told the formula and we will be doing some numerical related to lcr circuit and lc oscillations okay clear children so uh, the hope uh, that's it. i hope all of you are uh, trying the method which i gave you as tips in the previous video and uh, in this also you can try some simple questions for your uh, that's a thorough knowledge of your uh, what is that equations okay clear children so in the next video we will meet again and if you like the channel please don't forget to subscribe like and share thank you for watching bye